Have you ever had tomatoes? Yes. Good. And I don't mean those uh, red things you buy at the supermarket, because that's not tomatoes. I mean tomatoes that, you know, they just, by the smell of it, makes your mouth water. They are savory and sweet and delicious, those tomatoes. And have you ever wondered why they differ so much from the usual tomatoes? Because I don't think that they are so much tasty, at least not around this time of year. Because I think you deserve to know why there is such a huge difference in flavor between those tomatoes. And, but I'm going to have to take that from the beginning, so, so bear, bear with me, because this is a long story. Uh, as you said, my father uh, and his father was, were farmers, and my grandfather, who inherited our farm by marrying my grandmother, was farming back in the 40s, 50s. And when you were farming back then, it was small-scale farming. You, you had crop rotation, and it was, of course, it was organic because we didn't know anything else. And this is the way we have been farming for centuries before then. But my grandfather was kind of a curious person, so he heard about this new thing called chemical fertilizer and how that would uh, increase the crop yield dramatically. Uh, so, of course, he had to try it out. And when you use fertilizer, everything grows much better. So, even the weeds. So then you have to use some pesticides to kill off those unwanted weeds because you want a perfect monoculture on your wheat field. You want there to be only wheat. And he, he got the promised increased crop yield. He had seven really good years, increased profitability and everything we were looking up. And then he got an unwanted bonus, which was leukemia. And he lived for five more years, passing on his legacy to my father, who uh, continued managing the soil the way his grandfather has been managing it. Because right now we're in the late 60s, and when it comes to chemical fertilizer and pesticides, everybody was doing it. It has had, in a very few short years, it had become the common practice of growing crops, at least in Sweden, where we are located. And, and my father continued, he didn't question it, but after a while, he, he noticed that he had to use more fertilizer, hence more pesticides, and he also noticed that the soil that used to be moist and rich and lifeful was turning kind of dry and, and, and stiff and just not as productive as it used to be, even though he was applying more of these beautiful chemicals. And then he met a, a woman who kind of asked him bluntly, is, is those pesticides, are they really safe? Is that really good? And to explain what happens here, I'm going to get back to the tomatoes later, okay? Uh, is I have to explain to you the soil anatomy. Because the soil, I don't know how, how much you know about it, it's, it's, it's a beautiful, perfect civilization, a healthy soil. If, if you think about it, it's, it's just layers of different, uh, different people. We have in a heap of healthy soil, you will find more life than people on the planet Earth. It's billions of microbes and fungi and insects and worms that work together. They have different tasks and different shores to make sure that the soil is healthy and the plants grow strong and, and the water is held back, you know, it's, it's in the soil. So, so it's, it's really like working really good. And if you take an unhealthy soil um, you, and you pick up the same heap, you're lucky if you find maybe a million types of life forms. You sure won't find any worms, but maybe some sort of microbes. But it won't be a perfect civilization. It will be a kind of a very uneven civilization, say like a civilization where there's only bi bureaucrats working and nobody actually producing anything. So it's just, it's off. And when you you grow crops year after year after year, as, as my father did. Uh, 
you disturb the civilization. And how it works is basically to grow any crop, and when I'm talking about crops, I'm talking about corn or wheat or, or soy or rice or any type of crop you have to grow in the soil to get food out of it. The first thing you have to do to, to get the seeds down there and get the, the, to break the, the soil is, is to turn it upside down, basically, by plowing it. And what you do when you turn soil upside down is that you ruin this beautiful civilization. It's like somebody coming home to you, turning your house upside down, and then you will try to go to the bathroom. It's going to be very difficult. Uh, and so that's the first thing you do, and this will actually kill some of the microlife in the soil. It will disturb some, and, and some will carry on just fine. And then, because you want the increased uh, crop yield, you're going to apply the, the, the f synthetic fertilizer. And synthetic fertilizer is extremely strong, very potent. So what it does is that it feeds some of this life in the civilization, it disturbs some, and it kills some. And then you have the weeds growing stronger and faster than ever. And you have to spray it with some pesticides, and the pesticides also disturb some of the civilization, and it kills some. And then you do this year by year by year by year by year by year. And in the end, you're going to be left with a very malfunctioning civilization of very few people. And that soil is not going to be a strong soil. It's not going to be a strong civilization that can withstand an external stress factor, such as a heavy rainfall or wind, for that matter. So when the rain comes, the rest of the soil is going to be swept away, if you're unlucky. And that is what my father saw. The soil just depleting slowly and slowly under his management model. And it it's just sounds pretty depressing, though, because most of the food we eat are actually produced in this way, and the meat we eat uh, is also produced in this way because we feed the animal those crops. But there is a way of undoing this. There's hope. Because just as you can grow soil to, to almost death, you can get it back to life. And there's a very, very wise old technology in doing so, and it's called ruminants. And they are embodied as cows or sheep or buffaloes. And w when you're left with this like, low-life, malfunctioning soil, you can't continue to, to plow it and turn that civilization upside down because that will stress it even further. So you have to give it some time to like, settle down and, and recuperate. And what you do then is that you, you grow grass. Because grass is a perennial crop, you don't need to reseed it. It will grow year by year by year. But in order for the grass to function properly and get the growing motor in, you have to cut it off once in a while. And the cows... They will do that for you, because they eat only grass. Very, they have this rumen, that's why they're called ruminants, where they process all this grass. And they also have one very good thing, too, in their four stomachs, which is microbes. So they're digesting this grass, and they're turning it into half-made soil, and then they're pooping it out, and those microbes, the, some of them will leave the stomach and uh, end up on the ground. They will be like perfect soil consultants to this malfunctioning soil society that is going on. So they will leak down and help out to, to start working and building new soil again. Plus that you have this permanent grassland, so you won't go out and disturb the soil. So they, they, they can start to work undisturbed by rebuilding their society. And then the cows will also trample down old organic matter to make sure that the soil have, have even more materia to work on. And those cows, they are not going to give us leukemia for this favor of creating soils to us. They are going to give us meat and milk. And our history ends well, because, well, Right around the time uh, I was born and my <laughs> sibling was born, uh, my father turned his farm uh, into an organic one. And he incorporated more and more cows. And when I grow older, 
I watched our soil recover. I watched the nature's diversity recover, and the sea that is just nearby our house recover. So now we can actually grow some crops again. So if you think back again to those tomatoes, and you've placed those tomatoes in this rich, healthy soil, and you place them in this kind of low-life, disturbed soil, which tomatoes do you think will taste better? Uh, so, kind of to sum it up, I thought that I, I made you a picture, because it's easier to <laughs> understand. And, and basically, what you have here to your right is food that feeds the soil, that creates new soil, that is sustainable uh, food production. And you won't find any chemicals there, because chemicals or chemical fertilizer is basically just like drugs. It's highly addictive. You have to use more and more of it to get the same effect. So, to your left, you will find, um, well, a soil-eating farming. And basically, so if you want those savory, awesome tomatoes, taste that blows your mind away, you have to feed the soil. I mean, basically, if we want to feed ourselves or our family or our children or anybody, we have to feed the soil. Because if we don't, the soil will not feed us. Thank you. <laughs>